Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Silver Lining Podcast. This is your host, Wendy Rosenthal, an intuitive healer and mindset coach for women, who is here to help you see the gift in disguise in the ups and downs in life so that you heal the mind, body, and spirit. Why? Because I know it is possible. Because I am not letting a cancer diagnosis stop me from living my best life. And I can teach you too. How to break free from anxiety and overwhelm from a life-changing diagnosis or event so that you can remember your healing potential and create the life that you desire. Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Silver Lining Podcast. Oh my goddess, I know it's been a hot minute since I talked to you last, but so many new and exciting things are happening that I'll be able to share in the next several weeks. One of the biggest one is that this past weekend, I participated in this international conference for mental health and psychological applications in what is happening right now in the current events, such as the pandemic, because to be honest, we all know it. Sometimes we don't talk about it, but there's still a lot of anxiety, a lot of overwhelm, a lot of mental health conditions that people are going through and either they're not aware of it or they're just trying to dismiss it trying to keep moving on because life keeps happening and we feel like we just got to rush and catch up with life right but it's interesting because that's one of the things that came in the conference um that one of the speakers actually shared his experience as well which is really in line with what we'll be talking about today in today's podcast with our special guests charlotte and jonathan from the wellness theory and that is when we operate from a state of mind where the ego is driving the bus right like when we get in our way even though we do know there are uh, changes to be made but either we don't know how to ask our questions or we try to dismiss it or we just we don't we think we don't have time or we think that they will just resolve on their own or maybe we don't have the resources and we just keep going and pushing ourselves and and at the end we just keep exhausting ourselves until we get a wake-up call until the body will literally tell you you got to stop And that's when there will be a disease or symptoms or something that is just not quite right. And we get to, all right, pay attention, right? And so we'll be talking about that and also about emotions, which is something that you guys know that we talk and we are passionate about that because really when we do connect and and integrate uh, the things and the lessons that we get from our experiences and allow our emotions to come through and express them in a healthy way. It's it's really a powerful thing, but if people are not so aware of that and we just keep pushing through in life and compounding those emotions as Charlotte will explain what that means in which they will be piling up on top of each other, right? And I think a lot of us have gone through something like that in our lives. And becoming more aware of our body and how to to really see the signs so that we can start making the changes that are necessary. So, so we'll be talking about all of this with our two special uh, guests. They are from the Wellness Theory and they are amazing people that I got to meet. I think it was at the beginning of the year, last year. Was it last year? This year. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Time flies, guys. So <laughs> I can't remember. Oh my goodness. But I'm excited for you guys to to listen to today's podcast. Please stay all the way to the end. And because uh, there are really good tips that Charlotte and Jonathan will share with us about how they do the kind of work that they do with their clients, because they do work on both aspects, the, the physical health, when it comes to attending physical symptoms let's say and also to the mental or and emotional aspect in how to dislodge how to get rid of in a healthy way these emotions that don't serve us anymore right and so they'll be sharing some other tips and also you'll find out more if you want to get to learn at a deeper level about their work and maybe working with them as well so that's it guys so stay tuned and um Let's welcome Charlotte and Jonathan from The Wellness Theory. Here I have two beautiful people from The Wellness Theory. 
uh, Charlotte and Jonathan, and they both are coaches from the UK. And thank you so much for being here with me across the pond <laughs> and coordinating with it with the difference of time. And they're going to be here talking to us about what it is that they do, about their background, and how we came to they became to form the wellness theory and how they're helping and impacting people's life all over the world. So thank you so much for being here, both of you. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know both of you have a beautiful story. They, You both came from different backgrounds and then you got together, obviously as a couple, but then also in your business and what you do and helping people and what exactly that, how that is impacting people's life. And so tell us about your, a little bit about yourself, about uh, how it is that you came to be here um, doing the wellness theory and helping people, teaching people about it. Awesome. Well, ladies first, I'll let Charlotte introduce <laughs> herself. <laughs> yeah, okay. So on that note, obviously, my name is Charlotte, as you've quite rightly said. Thank you so much for having us here. It's awesome to be able to connect with you again. Um, so yeah, so basically, I've been in the world of wellness since 2005. So quite a long time. And my journey comes really from the commercial fitness side of wellness and then into a more holistic approach hmm. yep. and uh, well i'm obviously my name's jonathan and for me kind of very similar to charlotte started in the fitness world um fitness and health world in 2001 so a little bit longer a little bit older as well uh, a little bit more experience <laughs> but um, I, I spent the majority of my time in the the fitness the, the physical side um, of wellness uh, to, until I got to that point where I started to realize that there needs to be a more holistic approach mm -hmm. to what I was doing to get lasting results. Um, so that's pretty much what we do now is integrating all areas of wellness um, into, well, including the physical, emotional, mental, uh, and spiritual sides. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I recall from our conversation uh, last time, I, um, both of you, but I remember, Jonathan, you mentioned that there was something in your life, something in your health that shifted and pretty much for a lot of people, that's what really happens. You know, we either get sick, something happens, we get a wake up call. And that was my initial thought when I came to form the podcast, because people were you know, not knowing what to do, I'm getting diagnosed with this, I'm having all this weird, especially women uh, at, around, you know, late 30s, 40s, having symptoms with their bodies, and they weren't sure, is this pre-menopause, like what is going on, and um, and finding that silver lining on the other side, right, like, and then what, what can we do once we know the lesson, or that what we are here to learn from this, in this case, health-related condition. So I, I recall you mentioned a little bit about that, and, and I guess that's how it, what it led you to be here, teaching people about that as well. And I recall you mentioned something about uh, be something like ego-driven, like you were very, a little bit aggressive, I guess, in your approach, is that is that right? Yeah, yeah, so I spent, um, pretty much I grew up um, in an environment where, as a male, I was basically taught to not show much emotion, well, not show um, what was classed as the quote unquote weak emotions, like um, obviously vulnerability, love, all that type of stuff. So my thing was to always show emotions like anger or um, be more sarcastic, aggression, all that type of stuff. And that's what I took into the workplace with me when I started working in the fitness industry. My whole thing was about obviously ego driven. So Obviously, I know everything. I know what I, um, more than everyone else around me. People need to listen to me. If they're doing stuff wrong, then I just flip out. And for me, it was just constant. Every single, every every week, every month, every year, just building on that. I was just compounding that anger, that aggression, um, every, all the time. And that was having a, a massive impact on the way I was living my life. So I was training a lot. I was eating. I was like eating healthy, I was training a lot, or so I thought at the time, uh, what I thought I should be doing based on the industry I was in. And I was I was always tired, I was just, I was always experiencing niggles and pain and discomfort um, just all the time. And I just, for me, I thought that was normal. I thought, okay, this must be what it is to be in this industry. That means like, I'm working 16 hours a day, I'm training hard, I'm eating well, I'm having to deal with people around me who are stressing me out, or so I thought so at the time. I thought, okay, this is this is how life is. Like this, is, I just need to now fight against it, you know, just keep pushing. Um, and that led me to a lot of pain, um, a lot of discomfort, just I'm feeling unfulfilled. 
And but my ego was always in the way. It was stopping me from um, kind of step, taking a step back and really thinking about what I was doing to myself because uh, I was just blaming. I was like that victim, victim mentality. I was blaming everyone around me for why I wasn't feeling the way I wanted to feel, why I wasn't achieving what I wanted to, wanted to achieve, um, or why things weren't going the way that I thought they should be going. And my ego would always be the one saying, I know what I'm doing. Like, why are people listening to me? Or why, are, why isn't things happening the way they're supposed to happen? Why are people not doing what they're supposed to do? Mm-hmm. And that would just drive me crazy all the time. And it took me a while to get to the point. I think it took me um, to a point where I got, I was experiencing chronic back pain um, for four years. And even then, when I was experiencing, I was still like getting in my own way and trying to find external ways to deal with my deal with my problems um and it took me to a point where i kind of my chronic back pain got so bad where i started to uh, affect my vision i started to get like blurry vision when it really kicked in and that's when i got to the point where i started to think there's got to be an easier way there's got to be an easier way like uh, my pain my suffering was getting too much where i think okay i need to do something and that's when i started to look into well i was reading more um, different books um, just kind of just becoming a bit more a little bit more open-minded to different um ways of doing things because what i was doing or what i have been doing for the last decade or so wasn't working <laughs> so it, my ego literally was just going for years and years and years before i started to realize okay 10 years of doing the same thing and it's not working, that's got to be a sign. Yes. <laughs> I, could have, I could have stopped a year, a year into that, but 10 years it took me to realise that there is a different way. And when I started to become more open-minded and started to look at um, different ways of doing things, that's when the holistic part started to kind of come into my life. Mm-hmm. That's when like, meditation, breathing, um, and being a bit more relaxed on my nutrition and how I train and listening more to my body. Um, and then that's that was my shift um, into really kind of going, moving away from what I used to do to moving into what I do now. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is that shift was when I started to realize it, the shift was, it was like a light bulb moment. I, I was like instantly think everything changed um, in terms of what I needed to do. So that, that change was instant. But the to, to get to where I'm now, that was just that was the consistency and the kind of the persistence to keep doing what I know I needed to do to change all that that conditioning and those habits that I kind of grew up with and I'd uh, taken into my into adulthood as well so it it took me a while but I'm like it's I don't regret any of it because it did it's it's helped me to become the person I am today and to help me to learn what I needed to learn and like I say I'm a big believer in everything happens at the right time and for a reason so and that was definitely the right time uh, for things to happen because I know that I would not have been open to stuff like meditation, to breath work, to to stillness and calm, mm-hmm. uh, all this, and to kind of being in, more in tune with my emotions. I never would have been um, open for that when my ego was still kind of controlling um, what I was doing. So it was definitely the right time at that point to start making those changes, and that's when yeah it was it was it was freeing it was it felt it felt really free uh free freeing and kind of light and nice to be able to realize that there is more than one way to do something and just because one way doesn't work doesn't mean you can't find another way exactly and i love that you mentioned a few different points that a lot of people that are on their journey to figuring out what's what's going on with their health physical or mental health and sometimes it's easy to miss um the signs right and one thing that you mentioned that you said for years, I think 10 years, you said you've been doing the same thing. And there's a point that people, and that's what I sometimes with myself and with people who I, I um, serve, you know, if you have tried something for so long and it hasn't worked, it hasn't worked, why do you keep doing it? Right. And sometimes it will take something even bigger, like a bigger wake up call uh, to really like make you stop. And then realize, okay, this obviously has not been working. And I find that there's a lot of people that are still, as you said, also, they really get in their way and they don't know, they already know something is wrong. They become that victim, you know, with that quote unquote suffering, whether it's physical first and then emotional, because it's something that sometimes they cannot understand what is going on or how to help themselves, but still 
in general, I feel sometimes people are still not open to see all the different uh, modalities that we can use to, to help ourselves, right? And it's beautiful that you also mentioned about, and, and it was instant for you. And I was going to ask you that it's not always the case for a lot of people, right? Like for some people, including me, um, you know, some days I could be, yes, everything is great. My morning rituals, I feel good. My body's healthy. I get checkups every six months. So that also is my way of measuring how good I am doing. And then I get too comfortable. And then sometimes I kind of like, I, I eat a little bit, you know, things that I shouldn't eat. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like crap. <laughs> I'm like, Wendy, remember, get back to your usual routines, right? And so, and just like that, maybe that's not as, I guess, drastic, but for some other people, they feel healthy, they feel good, and they're like, I'll just forget about exercise now, or like, it's summer, we can, you know, we barbecue all summer, eating all these different things, and then they even get worse. And so sometimes people do get in their own way, where they maybe, I don't know if, if, um, as I tell them, don't wait for that other wake up call. Don't wait for something. If it's if it feels good, if you're comfortable, celebrate it. But there are so many different ways rather than going back to the old habits. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. And like exactly what you said is, um, people get to the point where they feel good and they stop doing what makes them feel good. Mm-hmm. And then like it's the people. Anyone who's listening to this needs to realize that what. When you get to the point where you're feeling good, you're feeling healthy, you're feeling awesome, what you were doing up to that point is what you should keep doing. Obviously, there might be some tweaks or changes down the line, but it's not like meditation, breathing, eating um, nutritious foods, drinking water, sleeping well, all these things, they're not luxuries, they're necessities. They should be like, it should be a part of your daily, your weekly, your monthly routines. And it should be done for life. It should be easy enough to implement where it's it's literally just, you can do it for the rest of your life. It's not about doing it to a point where then stopping because you're going to go back again. And I did that many times in the past. Um, I, that was my habit of killing myself in the gym, eating crazy. And then when I got to a certain point, um, I would then go the opposite way where I wouldn't train as much and I would just binge eat eat because I was missing all the stuff I was sacrificing to try and feel better and look better. Um, And I think once people start to realize that it's not about doing all this stuff to get to a point and then go back to it, it's about making those changes and understanding why you're doing it. Um, Like for me, I want to, the reason I wanted that change because I I didn't want to, feel in pain anymore i didn't want to feel unfulfilled anymore i wanted i wanted to feel fulfilled i wanted to feel pain-free i wanted to feel energized all the time and my goal now is every year i want to be healthier and fitter and more mobile than i was the year before Mm -hmm. and the only way to be able to do that is to keep doing what's making me feel good just keep breathing keep meditating keep moving keep eating well and that doesn't mean i can't have um like i sacrifice burgers and chips and not train like um having a few days off of not training because i do if i feel like i need to i'll listen to my body and go okay i need a rest or if i feel like i need i don't or i want something i'll have it but i know in the grand scheme of things i've got in my mind my my end goal of what i want or not my end goal because it's not the end but i mean i've got my big goal and then i know that any little blips along the way whether that's a day where i feel a bit blare and I want to have a box of donuts, <laughs> then I know I'm not going to beat myself up about it because I know that's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next week. It's just it's one of those things where I thought, okay, I know what's happening. I know what I'm doing. I'm choosing to do this. Mm-hmm. And then my choice afterwards is to, okay, it's done. It's gone. Now I'm going to get back to what I, I, I've been doing every day. And by doing that, I don't beat myself up about it. I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel guilty yeah. about it. It just is what it is and I think that's where people go wrong they feel guilty about having a slice of like a, a bar of chocolate or something where they think they caved or they've um like they've done something wrong and mm. it happens um you it's human nature to have ups and downs exactly um, it, you're never going to be 100 energetic positive on it 24 7 for the rest of your life you're going to have these dips and it's okay and as long as like I always go as long as mature, as long as 80 percent of my my day, my week, my year, everything is doing what I want to do. The other 20% is flexible for, well, anything that comes up, really. 
Yeah, I love that. I love that 80-20%. However, maybe for many of us, we do not get this concept until we got to that wake up call, right? That challenging moment in, in which we probably realize that there are options. There are actually things that we get to choose in what we want to do and also how to be flexible, which really comes with the territory of learning to go through that challenging moment. But for those people who are still in the process of trying to figure out Um, you know, it's important to mention that it is okay to have all the feelings and especially now with the pandemic and people going through all sorts of feelings and emotions and also still trying to catch up, still, still trying to get through, you know, something, get some sort of action, even without thinking what the outcome is, right? And all these different emotions are coming through and they keep piling up because we might not find a healthy way of expressing ourselves, of resolving those emotions, if it is anger, disappointment, frustration, sadness. And so all of them keep piling up on top of each other, on top of each other, which leads me to the kind of work that you do. I recall seeing or reading this, that you do uh, work uh, through this with your clients about compounding emotions. So tell us about what this means and maybe how it can help people in their healing journey. Yeah, definitely. So that's that's really kind of what my backstory for like is all about as well so I when I was growing up I had a relatively okay upbringing um, in the stereotypical way you know two, two parents two kids and, and all of that kind of thing but then I went through a bit of a traumatizing time where parents were getting divorced I had become a bit of a people pleaser I wasn't expressing how I felt because I didn't want to upset anybody else so there was a lot of that going on and then I as a teenager I got a bit lost I think but I found a bit of direction when it comes to sports and, and health right mm-hmm. so I went and I studied sports diplomas and I went and I started to really find my my love and my passion for for exercise in the gym and all these kind of things fast forward to a time when I was actually then living in the the Middle East I was working in this the, the fitness industry feeling relatively healthy to a point right I was I was exercising well I was eating well um but then all of a sudden like my emotions caught up with me because I hadn't dealt with them before and it was like you said earlier like this wake-up call of okay something's going on here like there were some signals which I totally was unaware of I was very dissociated to, to the signals my body was telling me or that my mind was even telling me to a point um and that was little things like noticing that I was overthinking a lot. That was when I was noticing that actually when I'm around other people, I feel really energized. But then back behind closed doors, I just feel the opposite. It's exhausting. And you kind of have to put that face on to go and like lead your teams or to go and be around other people. Um, and don't get me wrong, I actually love what I was doing. It was kind of in, in a work context, but it was taking its toll personally. And that was very much down to, which I now know was a lot of unresolved negative emotions. So what had happened with me over time, I'd actually become desensitized to how I was actually feeling emotionally. If somebody said to me, how are you? And I had to describe emotionally how I felt, I wouldn't even know really the names of emotions, really. Like I was that dissociated that I probably wouldn't be able to pinpoint it. And that was that was a bit of a surprise to me as well, because I thought I was, you know, doing OK when it comes to, comes to health and wellness. And that for me was was when I literally got to the point where these emotions caught up with me to a point where it was fueling thoughts in my mind that I wanted to just end it all and that things were not okay in the world and actually I've got no right to be here and I don't want to be here and that was a really scary place to be um and it was a point where I I just kind of hit hit my rock bottom and I was like okay something's got to change this can't be right a bit like John there's got to be a better way right it can't just be like this like that that can't be it (laughs) it can't be what life's about so there was all this, this part of me, which was like, no, there's still something I haven't figured out yet, even though I was feeling that way. And that was the thing that pushed me to then go and get help. And as I sort of kind of worked through my own emotional wellness, I was able to start to learn and understand, OK, well, what actually happens with every human being, not just me, is that we do experience emotions that add up if we don't discharge them. Mm-hmm. And we always talk about something called stress compounding obviously one of the things that we do is we help people to um like release unhealthy stress Mm -hmm. and when we're referring to that we're talking about these unhealthy stresses 
of like our internal system, thoughts that don't serve us, emotions that no longer serve us. Because at the time when I was experiencing fear, shame, um, sadness, hurt, when I was experiencing all of those emotions, I didn't know what to do with them, <laughs> right? So my body kept them. <laughs> Sorry, but did you know that that's what they were? Uh, or was it all of them together at the same time that it was, I think you mentioned that it was just like what is really going on and not able to pinpoint what exactly that was and I guess how to take care of it. Yeah, go back to what the root cause could be, right? Exactly. And it's hindsight that now I can tell you that that's what I was experiencing. At the time, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Mm. And that comes from, like you said, quite rightly, they're going back to the root cause. It was only when I started to do work, which one of the things that I do with clients is timeline therapy. And that is where you go to the root cause of specific emotions and you literally go to the first event, which would have triggered or created this emotional charge. And it almost has like a domino effect in your system. And when you discharge that root cause, it starts to discharge all the other experiences you've had in regards to that emotion to that point so it doesn't mean you delete your memories or anything like that but what it does it discharges that energy and that heaviness to it as well um, and that was a very very profound experience for me going through that journey and really waking up to who I was and understanding actually my journey has led me here and that's okay and it's a good thing I wish I'd have learned all of this stuff sooner oh, which yeah. is now why we do what we do because we don't want people waking up when they're 25 with all this stress and emotion thinking they want to end it all you know we, we don't want that for anyone that suffering is awful right that's that's not a nice place to be so that's kind of why we do what we do now is because we just don't want anybody else to experience that but that being said we need more people speaking about this which is one of the reasons why it's been so powerful i think for me my own healing journey but also for other people i really appreciate that because that's one thing that is so true across the board when it comes to overall wellness people are still too timid too close to even ask questions share what it is they're going through um, because there's that fear of finding out something worse, you know, if it's health, health related, something worse could be there. Um, or, and even in my own surroundings, like people have all the different symptoms, but they are scared of even going to the doctor because they don't want to hear there is a diagnosis. But sometimes it has happened that when that diagnosis comes, it's a little too far, you know, like ahead of the course of the disease or the condition and a little not late but you know there could have been something that could have been prevented right and so um and it is so true emotionally it is more draining when you don't know exactly what is going on but you know that there is something going on and so is that the most common thing that your clients come to you about uh like when there's when both of them the emotional hits you know, and the physical body are also feeling or going through some um, experiences? Yeah, it's usually a combination of a few things, right? There'll, there'll be some kind of red flags that are happening in their life. Some, and we always talk about stress on three different levels. We have like the life level where our relationships are just not going well. We haven't got clarity in our life purpose and where we're going. Maybe we're unfulfilled at work. Then we have like our wellness level of stress where there's something going on here, like, Physically, I'm, I'm having chronic pain or emotionally, I can't control how I feel or I'm overthinking all the time. And then we have like the root levels of stress. And that's usually when people can already resonate with maybe some traumas they've experienced or there's something that they know needs to be resolved and they know they haven't really worked through some stuff. So they usually come in at one of those three levels, don't they? Yeah, definitely. For me, I just say my, I, well, at the time I didn't know, but now I know my pain was down to, I was, well, unresolved emotions and stress had pent up and how it was compounding on my body and when I started and when I started to focus on myself and started to calm down and actually process what I was feeling that's where my pain went so I know now that my pain was a result um, of that whereas at the time I thought my pain was because my posture was poor or because I was training too much and there was nothing but it wasn't a physical problem it was an emotion, emotional one wow yes I completely agree with that and um, it feels like there is still that missing link between mental health, emotional health, especially, and physical health, because many of us understand that we all are energy, emotions are energy that can be manifested in a physical form. And of course, what physical form that would be, it would be in our bodies. And especially if it is past trauma, 
And as we were talking a little while ago, if emotions are not resolved, they are not, they are not taken care of. Um, at at the moment, it has happened. It has created trauma, or even later on, because at the end, healing is healing, no matter when it happens, as long as we get to do that right and empty that vessel from any stagnant emotion. And so <clears throat> it will it will pile up on top of each other and become this compounding effect that at some point is going to burst, at some point is going to want to come out. And it will happen when it gets triggered by some other event happening at the present time. And I'm sure that's what's happening at this point for so many people with the pandemic. But it feels also like in the system where we are now, the medical system and how we do take care of health it is it is quite different because it almost feels like it's not really health care is disease care because what doctors uh, do pay more attention to are the symptoms what's wrong rather than prevention right rather than okay let's get you back into health by doing things that are going to promote that because so far and I obviously can speak for myself, from my own experience and people who I've met. It's more about, okay, let's, you have this pain, let's get to that pain by numbing it. And it's sad. It is sad because there is that missing aspect of taking care of the emotional side of things. What else is going on? What's, what's not obvious to our eyes, but is really happening in the inside? Because the pain is not just happening for no reason. And there, there could be an emotional aspect of why this person is going through what he or she is going through that is creating this external pain, right? Yeah, and that, and that was that was a bit, a bit like my experience. When I went and got, and got help for the very first time, she it was great because she... she she, she was fantastic at what she did and she really taught me and about like how the mind works what what's happening in scientifically as well when it comes to our emotions and our mental health but the missing link was then okay well how does that match my lifestyle yeah. it was great that I understood it but then it was like okay well how does this fit into my world right and it's interesting because you touched upon this earlier is I was very much looking after my physical well-being, but not my mental and emotional. Then when I had become aware of my mental and emotional well-being, I actually got so invested in that that I started to neglect my physical well-being. Mm -hmm. So not intentionally, but, you know, one, one workout, you know, got missed in a week and then a second workout got missed in a week. So it happened gradually. But it was then when I was like probably a few more months down the line, probably about six to eight months down the line, I was like, whoa, hang on a minute. I'm feeling good now in my, my mind and my heart. Like I'm feeling great about life, but now I actually just feel a bit heavy. I'm feeling tired. And then that was when I was like, okay, hang on a minute. Let's just go back to basics here. And that was when it was like kind of piecing it together. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's it takes time. It takes understanding, and it's good that for a lot of people, you guys, including myself, you know, like we got to open up to the signs and and take the action. And I love that both of you uh, say, and I'm you know, like I'm proud to hear that people are able to really recognize what is going on and ask themselves, right, like what really is going on, and is this really what is supposed to be? That's the point that okay, this is not right. And there's something that got to change. And, um, and then investigating what it is that I can do, asking the people, you know, like the right people, how to get helped. And, um, and it's a beautiful work that you do. Is that exactly what wellness theory is about? Because um, I love that in the whole name about wellness theory and, and, and when people hear it, you know, like, okay, that's what exactly it is or what I'm getting when I'm working with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was, uh, I was not wellness theory, well, the whole point, of, it came about because obviously I was, again, focusing more on the physical side. So I was running a fitness education business in the Middle East. Um, and then Charlotte was doing coaching, obviously more on the mental, emotional front. Mm -hmm. um, and then it took us, it, obviously I started noticing, especially in the course that we're teaching, when it, especially when it was injury prevention, rehab, all this type of stuff that, there was a lot more going on than just the physical side of it. And then we started to think, okay, why are we doing these separately when they should be together? Like the, the physical, the mental, the emotional, it all connects. So trying to teach someone and get them to understand just one section of wellness 
is pointless because they ne- they don't get the whole connection of how it all fits together, and that's kind of why we decided to bring everything together and create the wellness area because we understood that only an integrated approach of focusing on all these areas of wellness is going to create is going to help people to create longevity and lasting change, isn't it? Yeah, and it's all about the lasting change element for us. Like, like I said, we spent a long time in your commercial fitness chains where it's all about like members coming in they've got this goal they want to get in great shape for their holiday or to get married which is great it's awesome to have those goals but they would reach that goal and then as soon as they come back off their vacation or their wedding they just put all the way back on and they feel bad about themselves again so there was never that idea really that was really deep-seated about lasting change and that's something that we with our journeys we realize is so important because like we don't want to experience that stuff again so nobody else is going to want to go back to however they were feeling again so it's very much about lasting change and for us it's about understanding and knowing that the root of everything usually comes back to some form of stress whether that's physical mental emotional existential it doesn't matter like what's happening there is there is some kind of um, dysregulation in the system Mm -hmm. we need to figure out where that is we need to then let go of that we then need to leverage our wellness and then from there people can actually now have space and the capacity to go and make a positive impact on the world whatever that looks like for that person so we're true believers that everybody has the right and the ability to be healthy mm-hmm. and not only that when they do and they own that and they take real responsibility mm-hmm. for that they just have this ripple effect out into the world as well Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is beautiful because uh, much of what they they might be going through right now really is stopping them from doing all these other things that is creating changes in different areas, relationships, uh, their jobs, and and personally as well. And once that breaks, is is exactly that the ripple effect of of seeing changes everywhere, even if they just work in one one area, right? So for your clients, um, do they? So uh, do they come to you already knowing or have an idea of what is going wrong or what is not working, I guess, but um, how much time does it take them to realize exactly what changes need to be made? Or are they super clear when they come to you and they said, this is like an emotional thing or this is like a physical thing, or I guess it varies between all of them. It definitely depends on the person, but more often than not, People come to us because they're aware that something isn't right. And for yeah. one, it might be emotions. For some, it might be something physical. So they're aware of something and they come and they're like, this is what I need to fix. But then after a little bit of conversation and a bit of a deep dive, we soon find out actually there's something else behind that that really needs to be resolved. So most of the time they know something's wrong, but they can't always, again, pinpoint what that thing is. And sometimes it's more than one thing. Yep, that's just how this life is, right? One thing leads to the next and the next and the next thing. And that's how we ended up in this life journey. So we just get to try to make it the best we can. So briefly tell me, what is it like uh, a day in your life? (laughs) As wellness expert. Well, a day in our life. (laughs) Well, for me, I am a person, I, I love structure and I love um, consistency. So I, I, I like a, a routine. So for me, my day pretty much starts the same pretty much every day. So first thing I do is I'll go through my time, basically. So I'll do what I call lymphatic massage. I'll do breathing. Um, I'll do mobility. Um, I'll do my workouts, whatever that con- constitutes as. Mm-hmm. um and obviously then a little bit of calm time after um and then i'll have usually have breakfast and then get ready and start doing whatever work i've got planned for that day um whether that's editing or clients or whatever it is mm-hmm. and then throughout the day my routine is about obviously moving regularly so is to get up regularly do some stretching do some mobility do some moving I might go out for a walk um and i always tend to um on pretty much 90% of the time is stop around about four o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mainly because I know mentally by that point, um, unless obviously I've got clients later on in the evening. Um, if it's any computer work, I tend to shut off just because it's, uh, that's when mentally I turn, I, I, I need time to 
just go yeah, away from, from screens and from from work from that side of it you so, must wake up early like really early then yeah well not really like i'm my my optimal time is i like wake up at seven every day oh okay so i'm more of a seven o'clock riser i've tried the 5 a.m bit didn't work for me didn't like it so 7 a.m is seems to be the optimal time for me but i get because of my routine in it and so it's like fine-tuned um i don't lose any time um doing anything i can i can still fit everything i need to fit in in the time frames i've got um and then the other 10 percent of the time is when i might be working till later or it might be evening clients stuff like that but it all depends um, on what's happening but I, like I, I never shut myself off to just this time and this time but that's my routine but i'll allow flexible time if needed Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we've got into the 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 habit and it's just so healthy you can really notice the difference mm -hmm. is that it's not waking up with an alarm like yeah. ever unless we really have to um and naturally it mm -hmm. just feels so right yeah. to do that because for a long time especially when i was working in that kind of corporate world of okay well i'll be in the office by like 8 30 9 o'clock or in the gym at 8 a, 8 a.m or earlier so there would always be like you know you have to be here at this time people are expecting you counting you here and there mm -hmm. and when we then started to work for ourselves it was like oh it's nine o'clock and i can actually do whatever i want <laughs> it was like hmm, this is strange exactly. and it took me about maybe a year <laughs> to get out of that conditioning of i'm supposed to be working from this time until this time and um, so the alarm thing if anyone's listening yeah. and wants a real healthy tip if they can get away with it is to try to ask you yeah because um a lot of people sometimes wonder why do well like wellness experts do like how do they wake up everything must be perfect and everybody has their own ways of doing their routine uh that really is working for them right so okay. i appreciate your tip and so you wake up on your own i used to do that up until last year for the pandemic because since we were at home oh now i can sleep in a little bit more so my schedule has been a little bit all over the place but it's a beautiful thing to know that your body already knows like you just wake up when it knows it's time to rise up and then you go about your day yeah definitely and it's interesting because obviously as john said he's very disciplined he's like almost robotic and like at the same time I'll know exactly where he is and what he's up to um whereas I'm like the total opposite so I'm very much somebody that I I have like foundations and principles of things that I'll do every day but it might look totally different every day for the whole month mm -hmm. uh, but it always comes back to some kind of movement I love qigong um whether that's through the breath work the movement elements combining the both um it will, it will vary depending on how I'm just feeling on that day and what I feel I need to do I would always journal that's a absolute non-negotiable for me um we'll always be journaling at least once a day and uh, just reflecting on the day before what's coming ahead how I'm feeling just checking in yeah. um some form of stillness or meditation sometimes that can be a guided uh, meditation sometimes it's me just being still and being silent um which john loves um <laughs> and yeah like that's pretty much it and then he's getting into to the to the working day as you call it but we can't really say work we don't yeah. feel like it's work anymore like it just charges us up doesn't it yeah exactly so every and it's a good thing every day you know every day every week's different so there's always something you, you you never finish anything like if you're in a normal job you're like you i've got to finish this i've got to finish this but with what we're doing is like okay we're doing this and then all of a sudden it's go oh okay let's what, what about if we do this and then we do this and it's like not it's like never ending so you're always like branching off and building and improving and growing on it so it's quite nice to know that there's no end kind of goal to these projects because it's all it's all just continuation and building and improving on it yeah, yeah. definitely one thing that I will say is important, uh, like you highlighted there, is obviously we work together, we're married, we're obviously living together, like it's a lot of together going on here, right? <laughs> and it's, it's so nice because we're so aligned with what we do, but it's so, so important that we have that cut off boundary. Yeah. So yeah. in the evening, that is like, that's it. So like the mornings are our time individually to just kind of do our thing. And then throughout the day, it's almost our time to service for everybody else. Yeah. And then come the evening, it's our time as a couple and mm -hmm. obviously socially as well with our friends and 
family and stuff as well. So that's kind of what a day would look like yeah. for us. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing that as a couple, how how the dynamics work, because sometimes some people that I know that work together, uh, I mean, it works for you know every person differently, but it's beautiful that there's still time for each one separately to do their own thing. I guess their morning rituals and things like that, how to really fill up their cup and then come back together pour some of that cup to your clients mm-hmm. and then get back together again <laughs> and you know and 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 it's and it works right so that's a beautiful and at the same time because both of you have um are very dedicated to your work and also coming from your own backgrounds and helping yourself first and then helping other people as well so thank you for sharing that too. what else would you say or share to people who are looking to maybe a little by little improve their lifestyle something they get to um, incorporate maybe more into their routine um, we talked or and including also like how to start you know looking for those signs about something probably it's not quite right emotionally or physically and then taking the steps that they could take uh, to see the changes Okay. Yep, I'll go first. So I think <laughs> well, the, the thing that works the best for me at the start, which I still do to this day, is obviously breathing and body scan. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great starting point to understanding your body and to understanding what all these sig- like what's happening, what these signals are, and what these little red flags that might be showing up, or even like if nothing's showing up, it's like it's just to understand what's happening. Um, so that was a huge game changer for me. Is literally it was just started up for 10 minutes a day um just going through some breath work and body scan is literally scanning my body from the top to the bottom while i was breathing just try just observing all the sensations and feelings that um that were in my body and, and not trying to obviously figure out what they were or not trying to find out why they were there it's just observing them and just basically go running through um just to find out like what what i was feeling um and where on my body I was feeling it type of thing. Because then then the more I got in tune with that, the easier it was to start to figure out, okay, where, like, where, where this was coming from, where these feelings were coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it started to then connect those with uh, pretty much any like stresses in my life um, that I was having at the time, any like emotional kind of baggage I was holding on to. That was a reason for that. And the more I started to learn about, that connection between emotions and pain um, or emotions and discomfort and tension. I started to, during my breath work meditations, I started to then release that energy. Um, and that's when I started to become, obviously I started to be pain-free then at that point because it was started to connect with my body with what was going on in my head, what was going on in my body started to line up. And then when that happens, obviously your body loves that because your body knows you're listening to it. Um, is when you don't listen to it, that's when more pain comes up, more discomfort, because it's, that's the signal telling you, it's like it's screaming at you to pay attention to you, like pay attention to me. So I think breath, um, even just like five to 10 minutes of breath work and like a body scan every single day, every single morning is like, is a great starting point. I, I would totally echo what John said, especially about the, the body scan, because one of the things that got me more connected to myself was allowing myself to witness myself right and and allowing myself to just 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 listen free of any judgment and knowing that everything is impermanent Uh, because when you get to that point where you're at rock bottom and you you don't even want to be alive anymore you you're at a point where you're really buying into that idea right that's why it feels so heavy if I'd have understood then that not everything's permanent and this is okay and this is going to pass then I probably wouldn't have felt that intensity and so for anyone no matter where they are no matter where they are on on the the health spectrum or the wellness spectrum when it comes to physical emotional mental health sitting with yourself just allows you to to witness and to to notice how impermanent things are because when you actually just observe yourself or scan the body on the way down you might notice something on the way up it's probably gone right that it happens sometimes that that easily because we're actually not resisting it anymore. One thing, a common mistake people make when they do this is they notice something and then they put all their attention there. Where and they almost like wish it was either not there or wish it was something else. <laughs> and that's where we end up holding on to the issue because we're not observing it and stepping back and not buying into it. And the minute we just 
pay a little attention to that space, it will likely disperse and dissolve. You might not really get why and what happened because maybe you haven't connected the dots with, you know, past mm. emotion and thoughts and that kind of thing. But that level of just acceptance of actually, I'm going to stay with this feeling and I'm just going to observe it. <laughs> and actually it's okay and it will start to pass really, really well. And so I definitely echo that as the, as the starting point for anyone. Yeah, that is so true, because if I, like we pretty much are most of the time, maybe until last year, in which we kind of were forced to slow down a little bit and, you know, stay home. But we always, it feels like for quite a long time in our, at least our generation, always stayed busy, even our parents, right? Like always running around, rushing. And I noticed that a lot of people around me, they you know, they didn't pay attention when they wake up, including myself, right? And a lot of us did that, like just waking up, just doing the 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 usual thing, you know, going to the washroom, getting ready for work, maybe even breakfast if we had time or if not, well, we'll do it on the road and then driving to work. And it was a repetitive thing every single morning or, you know, that for the morning and then for the at nighttime or during the day, the same kind of thing. And almost as if we're just, you know, like doing this thing without even knowing what we're doing, you know, not paying attention and not just to us or our actions or our thoughts, but then also to who and what is around us as well. And, um, and it's a beautiful way of starting the day, right? And thank you for sharing that because it really allows people to slow down, I think, and to pay first pay attention to themselves and acknowledge themselves that they are here and um and their body as well and i like what you said that really not clinging to that that nudge or thing that maybe something is you know like in a, a discomfort in the body because maybe people will freak out like what is this pain because it had happened to me in the past like oh what is this like what is going on but just watching it from a side like stepping back a little bit and um just notice it and is that right what you say that for some people like even just the fact that not they notice something is there but not really obsessing about it and then that pain let's say is gone yeah yeah 100 mm-hmm. our clients notice that all the time mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll share with you when I first really connected on that level energetically with myself because for me it was very exciting because I'd never really been that connected to myself so I'm like oh what's this feeling <laughs> like it was really it was actually as much as it wasn't particularly enjoyable the feeling and um, this was obviously a bit later on in my own healing journey um, and this was actually I did uh, a 10-day meditation it's called Vipassana. Um, it's something that's worldwide. Um, anybody can just Google it and you'll find locations, I'm sure, in your country as to, to one that could be going by if it's something you want to do. But it's basically 10 days, complete silence. Um, you, you don't talk to anybody. You don't have your phone. You don't have pen, paper. You don't have anything. You will literally just meditate for about 10 hours a day. Um, so it's not something to take lightly. I mean, it's 10 hours a day, 10 days meditation. If you've never meditated before, I would suggest you do a bit of meditation before you go into it. But one of the things that was so powerful about that is that we we sh- we just stripped it all back. There was nothing but us, right? There was nothing but us and our presence and our awareness. And it was over a period of time because when we was um, like eating foods as well, we literally only pretty much had fruits and vegetables. There was a little bit of um, like grain in there as well, but not too much. And we only ate certain times a day. And it was very um, reduced compared to what, the average person would eat every day so we were stripped back from so many different elements like I said there the connection element the busyness element the the intake and what we're putting into our system was all very unique compared to our normal lifestyle and one thing I found is after a couple of days a lot of thoughts started to just sort of pass I was able to have like real quiet time and stillness within myself Mm -hmm. and one of the things that they teach in this meditation practice is is essentially a body scan on some level i mean anybody listening that knows about it knows that it's a bit deeper than that but just to simplify things is essentially a body scan and you you just notice and you follow the energy in your system you just follow it and there were so many times where i would feel like some just intense like pressure sometimes it'd be like a burning sensation in my shoulder mm. or when i'm going down and when i come out a cup it's just completely free and that feeling is is just incredible because it it, it wasn't a, a pain or an injury that i'd had previously it was just something in my body that was finding its way out 
and through observing that I was able to notice when it just dissipated and when it just just almost collapsed and again you go through a body scan again and again and again like obviously on these 10 days and you'll start to notice there's less sticking points towards the end and that's because the attention that you're giving to yourself completely autonomously so completely balanced free of judgment you're then able to just be yourself with your energy flowing I don't know if that makes sense does that make sense <laughs> it does make, I do get it like as far as the energy side of it I do I, I understand what you're saying and uh and sometimes it's you know the movement helps with energy flow but as well as the mental work the mental aspect of you know not not work as in like you have to consciously do it but really letting that out letting go of of obsessing or thinking too much about it and just allowing what comes to come and what's that feeling what's that whatever needs to come out right and um and uh so for you it's something that well 10 days helped because this what it was a consistent thing that it practice that you did right and then it so it would be gone let's say that pain gone and and not come back again is that is that how you yeah. knew that how that was working yeah definitely because we're in the beginning it's like when you finally like get those kind of like thoughts out of your mind or you just slow down like you said when as soon as you slow down you suddenly get access to these feelings right and pain is energy right at the end of the day so we're really talking about the same thing here and what was happening is when i would body scan like that energy call it pain sometimes a really nice feeling but sometimes it wasn't like i said it was like a burning sensation or like a, a spasm type feeling even and had i not spent those 10 days doing that who knows where those issues could have led to so at that time they what there wasn't anything that was bothering me in my everyday life but had i not been a witness to those things there's a strong chance they would have become something so yeah in it sort of to answer your question there absolutely like that you that pain just dissipates and yeah it was because it was such an immersive experience and we like really stripped it back in that 10 days it sounds like you can only experience that in those kind of environments but that's now one of the things that we help our clients with is how to remain autonomous when they're observing themselves because they can also feel that too regardless of their environment mm -hmm. yeah that's that's so true and it's a beautiful way to really acknowledge our body that so far has done so much work for the 30 40 something years and it's not like a little worker that does all these things and, and are always trying to keep us healthy right it's just that sometimes when there's imbalance that well you know obviously we have to stop and check um because often we don't do that <laughs> we don't acknowledge it how to how good it's doing um and giving that break Oh, thank you so much for sharing your your wisdom and your experience and, and your background and the things that you do uh, to help people in bringing more of this awareness, how to pay attention to both the emotional aspect of healing as well as the physical aspect and, and sharing also your, a little bit of your lifestyle because I think that's also inspiring uh, when people are looking for, you know, like how exactly is, is my day going to be, especially with the changes that are happening, still happening now and, and sometimes for many people things had to flip all around and there's uh there I, i'm seeing that there's um uh, interest for them learning you know from from other people um experts in wellness as well thank you so much for sharing all of that any last words that you want to share before we log off i think mm -hmm. the the main thing is is just to echo back what you just said there is like lifestyle is something that is so unique to everybody as well is try what works for you mm -hmm. you know i think we said this actually when you was on our podcast as a guest is try something new and i'm sure your listeners have heard you say that many times but yeah it's great if you're inspired by what we're doing but try bits of it and then see if you feel amazing doing it like john mm -hmm. said earlier keep doing it exactly. <laughs> if you don't feel like it's for you that's okay try something yeah, else exactly. you figure got, it out. Yeah, you just gotta listen to your body listen to what's happening listen to how you're feeling because mm -hmm. that's gonna your body like you said already your body is amazing Amazing. It has everything it needs to keep you at optimal health. The problem is, is when people are not feeding themselves with the right foods or the right environments, the body can only keep you at optimum based on your current level of health. So optimum might be basically someone who 
can barely walk up um, walk upstairs without getting out of breath. That's as, that's as healthy as they're going to be based on what they're giving themselves. So it's important to give your body the right to um, the right environment externally and internally to be able to then do its job. What it's naturally doing is to keep you healthy and energized all the time. Um, and like you said, uh, and just understand that change is the only constant um, in this world. So embrace it. Like if things aren't working, change it. <laughs> Even if you don't know what to change it to, figure something out, try it, and then see what happens. Because that's the only way you're going to understand your yourself better, and the only way you're going to find out what works best for you um, is just by changing and trying things, and keep trying, keep tracking, keep feeling, keep understanding yourself, and then eventually you're going to find that we call that sweet spot. You're going to find that that well, I say quote unquote perfect, a perfect process but it still will need tweaking as time goes on. As you become uh, more aware of yourself, you'll start tweaking and improving things. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely just become more aware and just tune into your body more. Right, right. So one more thing before we let go. So at one point you mentioned that there was a time in which you were just following your ego, like you were more ego driven, right? So for those people out there who are probably at that state and struggling in seeing what needs to be changed, maybe they're still getting in their way and they're following what their mind is trying to tell them that no, things are fine. Or maybe there's a little bit of fear of change because anything really requires change. So what can we tell those people who are either not sure about what's going on but they know that there's something that got to change so I had to take that first step and or those people that are ready to take the step the first step they know what they need to do but it's their mind that keeps holding them back quote unquote right yeah definitely there's still there's still areas in my life where ego creeps in now and again which i'm still working on like it's isn't it it's it's not a like, okay, it's done, work's done, I don't, I don't have to think about it anymore. It's just a continuing process. Um, but I, back in the day, my ego would kick in all the time. It would be my initial go-to, my snap decision. Anyone said something, is like, I, I wouldn't even listen to them. Yeah. I would just go, no, no, this is how we're doing it. I know best we're doing it this way. So I'd say for anyone who, well, the first thing is anyone who's in that position, the first of all, they need to want to change. They need to want to get, let their ego go. Um, because if they if they're listening to this, if someone's listening to this, which I doubt they will be with a massive ego, uh, and they're thinking now all of this is rubbish, I know best, I don't need to follow any of this, then they're never gonna be able to become aware of it. They they need to get into that uh, that point where maybe they they get to a point where they're suffering too much and then they think, okay, I need to change now. But there's always different ways that people get to it. Like for me, it took me a process of kind of suffering too much but then getting to a point of reading certain books going on courses look kind of listen and then starting to think differently and starting to actually take a step back and what i found that most of the time my ego would kick in when i'm in a situation um where i'm in a confrontation with someone or something was happening and it didn't fit my model of the world at that time that's when it would go ego would kick in and go no this is how we're doing it because i didn't understand any other way and because i didn't understand my ego would go no i you don't understand it, which means you shouldn't do it. So we need to stick to what we know. Um, so now I know if I'm kind of getting into that um, into that environment again, that situation is to kind of try and step back from it, is try and move away from it and not make any decisions until I've had time to cool down um, and come into a more resourceful state because my ego kicks in when I'm not in a resourceful state, when I'm stressed or if I'm tired or hungry. So I noticed, I know, okay, I know if I want to say something, I think, okay, I'm just going to not say anything. I'm going to move, go, walk away. I'm going to get myself into a resourceful state, whether that means maybe wait till the next day or when I've had a good night's sleep or when I've had some food and then think about it. Because if I don't do that, my ego will quickly just literally rush to the front of my mind and start saying things or doing things that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, giggling, I'm giggling there a little bit because I, when it comes to our business, like if there's ever something that I, I've got an idea and I want him on board with, like I know when to ask him and when not to. <laughs> I know like, is he eaten? Has he slept? 
how's he doing? Did he do his breathing? Did he do his... Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's ditch this, right? <laughs> um, which is just fun. Um, but the, it works. <laughs> it, it does work. It does work. And you know the same for me yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, we just want to add something to that. Is that ego is often an attachment. Is it an attachment mm. to an outcome or is it an attachment to an identity that we have in a specific situation? So to, for anybody that is aware that they may be attacking the ego a little bit and i think everybody is on some level yeah. um it's really important um, to try and detach from an outcome like john said create space for him to go away and almost figure it out but detaching from any particular outcome is really really helpful and if anybody wants to look a bit further into that i know you may have read it already is the surrender experiment mm -hmm. um i believe it's michael singer fantastic book for a great role model for somebody that has learned to be able to detach from an outcome and then you can see how his life unfolded that's what the book is about is him his life unfolding in terms of detaching from outcomes letting go of the ego and almost being guided by something else and and it was really really powerful for me reading it from an ego perspective <laughs> but it's just detaching from an outcome i think it's helped a lot of our clients the most yeah, as well definitely. yeah yeah that's beautifully said <clears throat> because um that's the thing about, you know, when we want things so bad sometimes or want to get out of something, that's all we focus, but then that really is limiting as well in seeing other options and other ways of, in this case, healing. Oh, thank you so much, you guys, for sharing your story once again and your background and, and everything that you do. So how can people find you? I know you have a couple places where people can come and find you, get to know more about you, possibly work with you as well. And I'll have the links to um, to what you mentioned in the show notes here. Awesome. Yeah. So oh, on what, in Instagram, we are at Wellness Theory, and then we are the Wellness Theory on everything else. The Wellness Theory the Wellness Theory Podcast. Um, anybody listening to this obviously loves you already, Wendy. So there's a really cool conversation that we had with Wendy that we had a couple of weeks ago that will be going live very soon. And um, so head over there and check that out as well. But thank you so much for having us on. It's again amazing to talk to you again today. My pleasure and happy to have you guys over. Cannot wait to see what else is coming up for you guys and for Wellness Theory. I'll see you guys on the other side.